Hi, my name is Moe Sugawa. I will present our work, Boiling Mind, Amplify the Audience Performance Connection through Sonification and Visualization of Heart and Electrodermal Activities. In stage performances, an invisible wall in front of the stage often weakens the connection between the audience and the performers. To amplify this performative connection, we present the concept body and mind. In this work, we are exploring means to strengthen this connection. We present a stage production aiming to integrate the audience into the process of aesthetic creation via physiological sensing. We call this approach body and mind. This is the overview of this presentation. First of all, I will talk about background. Each performance lives from the interplay between the audience and the artist. In John Cage's work, the audience can contribute to the performance process by non-musical sounds <coughs> such as coughing or adjusting their seats. On the other hand, the engagement of the audience is difficult to assess since it is an implicit emotion involving both balance and arousal. Jamie Ward used the initial emotion sensors to explore the audience performer connection in theater workshop using interpersonal synchrony. Thus, available technologies such as wearable biosensors and digital media have enabled to explore the interaction between the performers and stage design. They are also attempt to integrate the audience's senses and feelings into the performance environment, which is similar to the main concept of our study. So I will introduce boiling mind concept. During the performance, the physiological data of the mouse audience were captured using custom-built smart wristbands. The physiological data includes heartbeats, galvanic skin response, EDA, and the LFH ratio related to the heart rate variability. The reaction of the audience is expressed through staging elements such as projections, lights, and sound, and become a part of the performance. Additionally, dancers see the representation of the audience's physiological data and can adjust their movements to create a calmer or a more intense atmosphere. Then, the audience's physiological response changes again as they watch the dancers dance in the response to their inner feelings. This design to create a performative feedback loop between the audience and dancers into a collaborative relationship by building a collective experience through the use of physiological data and reactive stage design. Next is setup. The collected physiological data of the audience transmitted to the server over Wi-Fi. The server restreams the processed data to other computers controlling each staging element. First, let's talk about sensing the audience. To calculate audience engagement, stress, and excitement indicators, we engineered our own list of bands. It is measuring electrodermal activity and heart rate using optical blood volume pulse sensor. Also, gyro sensor is in list band. Second, talk about projection. Since the projection was covering the whole stage, it played a significant role in stating the audience agency itself. So we had mainly courses at the three points. First, visualizations should reflect audience reaction in real time. Visualizations were rendered and projected onto the stage using touch designer. Second, visualizations have to be easy to understand at a glance. We base the visual design around the intuitively comprehensive color scheme. A number of studies indicate that individual tends to associate red colors with arousal and excitation, whereas blue colors associate with quietness and relaxation. Therefore, in our design, we used warm colors such as red to represent arousal and cold colors such as blue to represent relaxation. The LFH ratio was mapped to the blue and red extremes and gradient. So how did we design the motion graphics and stage elements to match the story? In this project, both research and artists contributed to developing the concept during the iterative process to balance research and artistic interests. This process was mainly led by artists, especially the choreographer. We used 11 speakers on the stage. 
These sounds were fading along with the excitement level of the audience. We decided upon this approach as a way to not only allow the audience data to guide another aspect of the performance, but also to give the dancers a sonic cue of how engaged the audience was during these moments. Also, we used interactive writing with six moving headlights. Six members from the audience were selected with their HR data mapped to the intensity of the corresponding light. In March 2020, we conducted three dance performances in Japan. Each live performance lasted for about one hour and seven dancers performed the eight dance scenes. 139 people attended the three performances. The choreographer also created some improvisational sections where dancers could interact with the stage elements affected by audience physiological response. For example, in a scene called Romeo, the dancer chose an audience. The dancers could perceive the emotional state of the chosen audience based on the color of the visual projection. When it turned red, the dancer would start to improvise and reach out to the audience. For all three performances, the LFH of ratio of the audience indicated a high level of excitement. We collected the questionnaire from 35 audiences and informal interviews and feedback from the choreographer, dancers, and the theater staff. From questionnaire, 95.6% of the audience members reported they enjoy the performance and they want to see another piece of based on the same design concept. 81.1% reported they felt this performance was more engaging than other performances they attended. 86.5% of them perceived that dance itself had the most impacting factor related to their feelings and emotions. From interviews for dancers, one dancer said when she saw several projections of audience stage turning blue, she tried to increase her movement speed and intensity to engage the audience more. However, it may not be easy for dancers to engage with the staging elements all the time, as for some part, they are preoccupied with the storyline. Regarding that, some dancers suggested adding more improvisational scenes allowing us to perform accordingly to the change of staging elements to engage the audience more. The graph shows EDA data of the one with the participants. The range marker indicates the peak of skin conductivity and the purple marker indicated the body. For example, looking at the graph, we can see the phase shift between the peak and the body at about 40 minutes. This is a Romeo scene where the audience is putting on the stage. Thus, the distribution of phase peaks suggested that there is a relation between the excitement peaks and the performance scenes. We will now list what we have learned from these feedbacks. A criticism from several members of the audience was that they cannot recognize how their own data changed the stage elements. One solution could be to play with the sense of agency. For example, audience control over the staging elements before the performance starts. Several participants mentioned that they enjoy the scene which is a plot of the low physiological data for each audience member. Because of the low data, It was very messy and difficult to read the information, but what was important for the audience was to feel that they were actually visualizing their own data in real time. We saw that low time series data might not be optimal, yet keeping close to the low signals for visualization seems to be one takeaway. Dancers mentioned that they need more practice to acquire physical techniques to respond to the audience's biomic data. We need to create better practices and training routines surrounding this concept. We introduced Body in Mind, a novel interactive performance approach that breaks the fourth wall between the audience and performance by using sonification and visualization of heartbeats and EDA data. Also, the reception of the three performances was very positive. The intention of creating a seamless feedback loop between the audience and the performers is still not fully achieved. For future work, we will add a dancer's real-time recording for the fourth performance. 
This will allow us to audio visual how audience performer physiological data interact with and influences each other. Also, this paper focuses on the design process and providing the data set to the community in general. The analysis of data is future work and will give more quantitative insights into how to design these experiences. And we believe this approach can be applied in the field of remote performances in which the audience is physically separated from the performance space. I would like to thank you all the members who are participating in this project. We hope this research can inspire and help performers and designers to explore novel methods by developing more intact works. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Do you have any questions or comments?